Alright, so, uh, let's do this. Haven't even started and, like, turning stuff over already. Alright, so, let's see. We'll start off, we're going to oil, oil in the canvas. Let's do that. So this is, let me talk about the paint a little bit. This is a hmm, 11 by 7, 11 by 14. Uh, just a regular canvas. It's got three coats of gesso on it. And then it's got this burnt umber uh, paint over it. And then it's been underpainted. So there's going to be some other stuff in this scene. I just wanted to underpaint this part and then kind of work with that. So it's kind of like a partial underpainting. Um, and then we'll work on that from there. We'll kind of work our way up. All right, let's get some Let's get some oil on the canvas. Hey, Emily. Hey, kiddo. How are you, dear? How are you? How are you? It looks like you're knocking out those ornaments. You gonna get them all done by Thanksgiving, you think? All right. I have to give you, I have to do it like a, an advertisement here on my channel and everybody gets on. Alright, we'll just oil this in. Not too concerned. So this was like a little experimental thing that I did. Just to try to try this out. Sort of a partial painting and then blend it over the top of that. So we'll be using mostly glazes today, so I'll probably use the filbert and a flat most of the time. So let's just clean this one inch brush and put it back away. And then we will we'll wipe some of this back. Now this this uh, liquid clear is make it myself, so it's pretty lean. It's gonna dry really fast. Um, you know, if you want it to last a little longer, you can you can find the video on my channel. Um, but if you want it to last a little longer than um, it does, just add a little bit more, add a little less, either a little more linseed oil or a little less. Uh, Mineral spirits. Older mineral spirits. Don't add don't add just regular mineral spirits. So that'll be a catastrophe. It'll stink up the place. Not even halfway done. Well, you know, that's something, right? Alright, so mm, I want to create some contrast in the sky too, so let me get let me get a filbert up here. This is my soft filbert. I like this little filbert. I had this brush a long time. It's starting to get pretty worn, but that's okay. I got another one. <laughs> Alright, let's start off with some. Let's put a little bit of cad yellow medium. And let's just kind of. I'm going to. Let's start at the horizon. Oh, well, I don't want to quite start at the horizon because there's going to. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's just. Let's start at the horizon. We'll start kind of like right down here. And we're putting on a very thin layer of paint here. We're kind of pushing it around, so we're, kind of, we're going to paint right on top of this boat because I want to uh, contrast the boat against the horizon. But, uh, so we'll wipe some of that back in a little bit. Yeah, it's kind of I kind of like that. That's okay. So let's put a little bit in these windows. We'll come back and restore those in a minute. So this is actually applying portrait course types of things that things I picked up in the portrait course and then carried over into my landscaping stuff. So if you didn't see those, the portrait stuff yesterday that I did, you can, you can go back and look into photo albums and probably find it in there. Alright. So I can't say for sure that you'll find it in there. I can tell you for sure that it's in there, and whether you can find it or not might be two different things. But. Let's put a little bit more of this yellow, and then we're going to kind of take a look at that. All right, I want to kind of, let's tell you what, let's bring this, bring this yellow up just a little bit more right here around the boat. Kind of start to round it off some. All right, that looks pretty good. All right, let's just blend that out. So we use a fan brush to do that. Hey, Dorothy. How are you, dear? 
All right, let's just kind of blend this out. Even this out some. I'm going to brighten, brighten, and unbrighten different parts of it as we go. But for now, this will. All right, let's add a little bit of, let's see. No, no, not that. Let's just use this. So let's get some cat orange up here. I'm going to start to add to this a little bit more. Not a lot, not a lot. Maybe even put a little bit of bright red in here before we're done. We'll see, we'll see. Or maybe some of those are in crimson. So let's go up above that and start to glaze this in. So we're just putting minuscule bits of paint on the canvas. Like I say, you know, we're just kind of experimenting here. But I thought you guys might like to come along for the for the ride. Nothing else. If nothing else, you can see that uh, you can see my experiment fail. If I don't quite figure out how to make it all go down, but we'll figure it out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, now oh, wait. Let's kind of start here. Kind of blend this up. And let's, let's have a little bit of a little bit of uh, lizard and crimson. I think this is actually lizard and crimson. I've been using uh, a lot of my uh, granacridone. Magenta lately, but I think this is actually just the lizard crimson. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting to see how this paint performs over the underpainting, the glaze, kind of this glaze format. We'll blend this in a second, so it'll look a little bit rough. It'll look a little bit rough for a little while. It'll get better, hopefully. We hope we'll get better. We have to reload quite a bit. That's okay. Okay, right, now start to kind of level this sky a little bit. Get it out of that kind of archy form. Come back with a little bit more orange right in this corner. I want to make the sky a little bit busier. Mix these colors up a little bit. Alright, let's blend all that and then we'll work on it some more. Hey Billy! Hey Dave! Oh Dave, there's there's a lot of videos in there. Feel free to roam around, man. And send me if you have any questions, just send them over to me. Just send me a message. Alright, so now we're just going to kind of blend this out. Take some of that cat out. Alright, so I'm not quite... So now the yellow don't look quite, look quite so yellow, so let's start adding a little bit more of that back in. Let's go this time. Let's add some cad yellow. This is cad yellow light. That was cad yellow medium the first time. But let's add a little bit of cad yellow light. Into this, see how that goes. I'm not going to clean the brush, I'm just going to so we're just going to paint over this boat because I want to be able to see that sunlight through those windows when I get to get all this on here. And then we get if I get this painting done and I still got some time, I'll try to do a uh, so try to do a, another landscape here in a minute, in a little while. Not in a minute, but in a little while. Alright, there we go. Now we're just kind of blending a little bit of cad yellow and a little bit of orange together. Cad orange. Just to kind of make that sky a little bit wavy. Alright, let's bring 
So we're not quite coming in to where the sun is, but we know it's coming up over the horizon. We're just kind of blending this with the brush while we get it on the So let's take some, what do I feel like today? Oh, let's use some, um, well, let's use some, let's just use Thalo Blue. Thalo Blue will be fine. Oh, this is thick. That's okay though. It's actually good if I'm painting mountains. It'll be a little harder in this particular technique, but it would be alright. Alright. The paint's probably a couple years old. Alright, so let's pick up some thing though. I'm not gonna still not gonna clean the brush yet. We're gonna start off by putting this thing of blue in here. We're not quite touching the red, but we're just above it. We won't use this brush to blend anymore because that devil blue is going to overpower it if we do. And I'll blend up with everything and be blue. Blue. Blue, blue, blue. Alright, now we're going to take this and push it back. Uh, let's use the fan brush to do that. Mm hmm. <laughs> So what we're going to do is pull this, pull these two colors together. And then we'll break some of that, some of that merger up with some clouds in a minute. But now, just want to kind of smooth it out, smooth it out. I'm just kind of wipe up here. I'm just kind of wiping paint off of the brush. Alright, I'm going to lighten that a little bit. So let's put some, a little bit of titanium white on the top of that. And then we'll merge that together. We'll blend all that together too. Some of that, I'm gonna put some more dark back in it in a minute, but for now, I don't want it to be. There we go. There we go. All right. I don't want it to be too dark, too fast. Let's just kind of blend all that now. All right, now we'll come back with some darker color. Even with a little bit of ultramarine here in the corner to start with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Still haven't cleaned the brush, but we'll clean it in a minute. So, this is not really, I mean, if we were doing kind of like a Bob Ross thing, we'd be using our one inch brush. And we're, not, we're not quite. That's not. This is not really the technique that Bob teaches. So it's got a little bit of something. It's kind of like it's kind of like my own thing here. I reckon. I reckon. That gives me a thought about where to put some clouds now. All right. Now we can start thinking about darkening it all this together. All right. Let's finish this sky up. Well, let's finish up the background sky anyway. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hang on, guys. I'll look at questions in just a second.
All right, now I'm going to start working some clouds into this. Let me clean your brushes. Well, I'm kind of a soft-spoken guy. It doesn't really matter too much what I'm saying. I'm just kind of explaining where I'm going, what I'm doing while I'm going. All right. So let's put some, let's put some big clouds up in here. I want a couple of streamers. I'll tell you what, let's put some streamers up this way first. Yeah, I think we'll stick with the streamer kind of clouds today. I don't really feel too much like puffy clouds. And then there's little darker clouds up here. Maybe a little puff. Just a tad more. I don't want too much in there. Don't want too much in there. It's kind of puffy. Alright. Alright, let's blend that back. Let me just wipe the paint in the brush. I'm not really cleaning the brush, I'm just wiping the paint out of it. I'm going to have to push these clouds back. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There we go. Good enough. Alright, now I'm going to put a couple of dark ones up there. So let's pick up some ultramarine blue. Alright, I'm not going to do that on the other side though. Just want to push that one out. Alright, just to give it a little extra interest. Alright, now we are cleaning the brush. All right. You know, part of volume has to do with your internet speed too, uh, and I can't I can't really control your internet your internet speed. So there's only so much we can do on our broadcast end. All right. Okay, let's start working on the boat. So in order to be working on the boat, well, let's put I tell you what. Let's put some landscape in behind there before we do that. Let's put some landscape. So let's get, let's stick with this color. But let's put, let's build a, I will build kind of a faint color back in the background where I can push in some landscape. That's a little too blue. I want something a little more purple. So let's get. Oh, oh, I don't want doxazine's a little wild. Let's not, let's not go with doxazine. Let's just go with some lavender and try that. So this is a cobalt hue. So I don't I don't want that there. So I'm just gonna take it off with a Q-tip. All right. Yeah. That kind of blended with the red, so that kind of gave me a little bit of a, a precursor to this. Some of that will break up with the water in a little bit. Let's do that for this side as well. Let's make this one this side a little bit larger. This way. There we go. There we go. Kind of straighten that horizon just a little bit. You kind of let that drift off into the blue yonder. All right. 
Let's add a little bit of highlight to that. Every dark should have some highlight to it, so let's just... Painter girl Emily Jean is currently making Christmas ornaments, hand painted Christmas ornaments. They are freaking gorgeous. So if you haven't seen her channel, you should go check it out. You should go check it out. She got some great stuff over there. Support living artists because dead ones don't need the don't need the money. Well, that might be a very reasonably priced too, so check it out. Alright, let's start working on the ocean. We'll do this with a flat. Mostly because I think it'll be just easier to do that. Actually, I just want to start on the ocean, so we'll start to lay this in. I'm not trying to pull this perfectly straight, I'm just trying to because actually the horizon wouldn't be perfectly straight because some of these islands are a little bit closer than others. So let's kind of pull it in close to the boat. And I'm going to go ahead and just paint some up next to this boat. And I'll paint actually paint onto the boat because I, um, I don't want there to be a halo around it. So And I'm going to add a little bit of ultramarine blue to this mix because I want this side of the boat to be just a little darker when I first start off. Because it's shadowed on that side. Alright, now we're going to go work on the boat. Why? Why, you may ask? Because we want to I don't want to lay my hand down on the ocean to paint my boat, so. So, we're going to just take some Q-tips and start to clean off parts, this, different parts of this boat. Because we're just going to glaze this boat in. So let's get this part done. I wonder what color this boat is going to be. I haven't decided. I guess I need to figure that out. Don't you see? I haven't figured it out, but I will figure it out. Just checking my Q-tip there, see how much paint's on it. There's not a lot of paint on this boat, but there's enough. Alright, so now I'm going to take it off of these windows, but we want to leave the sun shining through the window. I'm not too worried about removing it from the guidance antenna because I'm going to paint over that in a really dark color anyway, so it doesn't really make any difference at this point. Alright. Uh, a little bit on this side right here. The only reason I'm taking it off is because I want that pen paint to be really thin when I start detailing it in. Alright, so let's start off. Let's clean the brushes that we got dirty. And then we can kind of start fresh here. So we'll clean this flap that we just used. And then we'll clean the filbert. Actually the filbert's already clean, so that's good. Alright. So let's switch to a small flat. And let's start off putting the shadows in. So let's start with, uh, I guess we'll just use some, I guess we'll use some ivory black to do this. I might still have some of that on my palette from yesterday. I paint just about every day, just about. So, all right, so let's start painting the window shadows in first, because they're going to be the hardest ones. So let's, Now 
Not too bad. Not too hard. Now that sun will start showing through there in a little bit. Sort the edges of this boat a little bit, just a little bit. There's a shadow that comes all the way across right here. We're just following the underpainting now. So this is very, once you get to this point, it's really kind of very coloring book style. If you thought it through. All right. Let's get that shadow across there. And then there's another one that runs all the way down the length of this boat. Yeah. Like a little bit on the inside of that boat. Here we go. Yeah. The sun is on the back side of the boat, so we're going to have some shadows on this side. Some shadows. All right, go back and put the rest of it in. Let's put the window in. Well, let's go ahead and paint the rest of it. Yeah, that's all. All right, let's come along pretty good. All right, let's decide a boat color. Let's, how about, let's start off with the top of the boat. Oh, you know what? I should have put the antenna in while I was doing that. Sorry. Hang on a second, guys. Any questions so far? Hey, Rosalie. Hey, Bruce. I didn't see you come in. All right. All right. Let's we'll start applying some of this glaze now. <coughs> well, let's start off with. I think we'll stick with that brush for a second. And let's put the cabin. Let's finish up, let's finish up the cabin a little bit. A little too much paint for the glaze. Here we go. Let's try this. We don't want this boat to be too glaringly white on the top, but it's pretty white, so let's just kind of sketch that, glaze that over. <laughs> a little wider on one side than on the other because the boat's looking turned away from us. I guess I could have drawn it a little more. A little more square and make it a little easier to paint, but not too much about I'm not too much about, about easy. Alright. So this side of the boat's gonna be a little lighter because it's alright, now let's bring the rest of this into the room. Let's add the shadow back right here on this one window. Let's kind of overlay that a little bit. And then we've got another shadow that runs like right here across the boat and down this way. There we go. Actually, I think it's black paint. It goes across the boat right there. All right. No questions. No, still no questions. Wow. All right. Okie dokie. If you have any, just throw them up there. Now we're going to bring this. We're going to keep these lines fairly sharp on this boat. 
now. I'm going to kind of move this grain of the paint that way. We're going to put a little bit more of that outline in back in a second. That's okay. That's okay. All right. All right. Now the rest of the boat's not white, so we'll have to. Let's go ahead and finish the detail on the upper deck, and then we won't have to worry about the rest of it. We'll have to come back and do it later. So we're just using the sharp edge of this brush to blend that just slightly. We're going to pick up a little bit more paint to sharpen this line. So you can see, hopefully, you can see, it's flat. You can see how sharp the edge is that we're using on that. So it's just kind of the way that we've loaded the paintbrush to give us that fine detail. Now we could use a script liner or something like that, I guess, to do that. It doesn't really suit me. So, so this part is shaded in, sort of like rounded. There we go. Okay, let's lay, uh, I'll tell you what, let's try, mm, I don't know, let me see, hmm. I want to keep these lines in here, I can paint them back in if I need to, but I'll tell you what we're going to do first, we're going to try to glaze over that first, and see if we can hold those lines in there, so in order to do that, I'm going to clean this brush, I'm going to switch brushes here in a second. I'm going to switch to a little bit of a softer brush, an angle brush, and we're going to put a little bit of oil in with this too. So, um, I think what I'm going to use, I'm going to use some stand oil, right, so you can see the stand oil, it's a little bit darker than, than uh, regular linseed oil, it, it, it'll give me a little while longer to work it mixes just like with linseed oil, but um, it, it dries slow, more, a little more slowly. So it'll give me a chance to fiddle with this a little bit. Let's see. I don't want to get too much, but... Alright, All right. Let's, let's see what we got. Because I'd like to try to hold that wood green on there if I can. Oh yeah, that's good. exactly what we want. We want that underpainting to show through just like that. And that will save us a lot of detail painting that we've already done over. We don't have to do it over. All right, so that worked out pretty good. That was part of this experiment, so that's good. All right, let's put this side in. <laughs> I don't use stand oil a lot because I usually paint pretty fast. So I usually I'm using liquid to do my medium, lay my medium in. But I'm going to darken this just a little bit. So I'm adding just a little bit more paint. Alright. Then I want to use, uh, I think I'll use Viridian Green. Yeah, I want to put a green color onto the boat, on the bottom, but we need it to be transparent, so we're going to run the same type of thing, picking up a, just a touch of stand oil, and I'll tell you what, uh, I'll tell you what, let's pick up some green, let's pick up a little bit of stand oil, let's mix that glaze, make sure there's no questions, hey Billy, oh he wouldn't talk to me, oh thank you Emily, Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, so let's just kind of this part of the boat. Those lines are going to show through just barely. They are going to show through. 
Now you might wonder why I'm skipping this part right here on the front. That's where the waves are going to go. So, boat's in, par boat's in motion, so we got to keep that part. Wow, that, that came together pretty easy. Mm -hmm. Got to straighten that line. And then we'll go on this side. Right there. Alright, right. let's clean the brush. We got one more line to put on the boat, and that's done in black. So we'll do this, we'll use this fine liner that I've been using, I'll just use that. Put the bow of the boat in. This little line right here. There we go. Alright. Alright, let's clean the brush. We'll move on to the water. Back to the water. Alright, so let's start off with some water lines at the shoreline, off in the distance on both sides. So we'll pick up some titanium white on the knife. And I think what we'll do is we'll kind of pull this across. And we'll add some, well, we can add some more in. We'll add some more in as we go. But let's do it on this side. I want it to be a little bit speckled. There we go. I want it to be a little bit speckled because I want to kind of just give the indication that the waves are just kind of capping in just a little bit, but not a lot. All right, now. Okay, let's get, let's go to, uh, I think I'll go to a large flat and we'll go back to this thalo blue. We'll put the color in first. I'm going to add just a little bit of color back over the top of that, that uh, borderline that I just put in. I want to do that again over here, too. There we go. So now this is all just about laying color in. This is our undertone. Not so much worry about the, the underpainting it under this part because I've just used it as a map really at this point. So and I'm kind of throwing a little bit of ultramarine blue in here and there just to add some texture to the ocean. Make it a little bit darker on one part and not so much on the other. Da -da -da -da. Oh, you know what? I should probably put some lettering on that boat. Alright, well, I already got the ocean in now, but we'll do that in a minute. Alright. Now we can start livening the ocean up a little bit. Let's clean this brush. I'll use a filbert, I think, to just line the ocean. Well, I'll just use a sweat. I already got it. I'll just use it. So let's just kind of start thinking about adding some, just some, just some waves here and there, here and here. There we go. Not a lot, just a little bit. I'm going to play that out. There we go. One more time, I think. Let's do that one more time. Maybe a little bit right there. Yeah, that looks good. That's what I'm looking for. All right, now we're going to start adding in the wave contours. So that'll be pretty easy to do, but let's just do it real quick. I'll, I will use a filter for that. I could use a fan brush. Hmm. What would you like to use, Benjamin? I'll use a fan brush. Okay. So let's kind of load this fan brush up pretty good. Start off, we want to kind of push the wave up like this on both sides of the boat. Really, the 
it's kind of about all we really need to do. Let's add a little bit of a little bit of breakage to this wave right here. And we'll kind of add a little bit of a curl, a little bit of a curl to it, like that. There we go. And maybe a little bit of curl this way too, maybe. Let's put it like right right here. So I need to add some lettering to the boat. Don't want to have an unlicensed pirate ship running around on the on the great ocean. So let's put some lettering on it real quick. That won't take long. Let's use uh, let's use no. Uh, I'll tell you what. Let's use this. This is a this is a dagger striker brush. We'll put some a little bit of stand oil on it, and let's pick up some black. Just kind of make it nice and slick. Let's try that. I think I want to try this. Let's try this. So I'm just kind of pulling, just accenting a couple of these lines here on the boat. Give it a little extra oomph. I'm going to go a little bit right here. Alright, there we go. And with that, I guess we'll sign it. So let's pick up some red. It's, it's in red, but it's turning it purple, but that's okay. <laughs> My name's not all that important. There we go. All right, guys. I think I'll let that go for now. I still don't understand how you do this style of oil painting. Oh, what part don't you understand, Billy? Tell me, and I'll, I'll, I'll explain it. You mean like the with the underpainting and the um or just oil painting or or what? Just tell me. Lay it on me, brother. Alright, so um I'm gonna go now. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what though, I see something else I'm gonna do. I'll take this wave right here and I'm gonna kinda round it off a little bit. Oh, the glazing? Okay. Or the underpainting? Okay. Well, well, hang on a second. We'll talk. Let me let me grab an underpainting and we'll talk about it real quick. So basically, we start off with just a sketch. So. Uh, Here's a sketch, two sketches. This one's Jessica Alba. This one's Emily Jean. So from there, um, 
just using burnt umber and oil. You paint the whole thing brown. And then you start wiping it back. So you wipe back all the, all the highlighted areas and you leave in uh, the mid-tone areas which you want to be left in and then you add darker tones to it so if, uh, you know again this is Jessica Alba and Emily Jean uh, from there you have a, a finished painting uh, it really actually I've had a lot of people say why don't you just leave that and just just sell that and I'm like oh you know uh, it just is what it is so and I said this wrong. These are actually both of these. The both of these sketches are Emily Jean. And then this is she's on. Then she's on this screen here with Jessica. So, anyway, creating the creating the uh, glaze is fairly simple. So I'll show you that real quick. So, on this plate, just so you understand what's on this plate, is some stand oil. And as you can see, it's not a lot, right? You can hardly see it. But there you go. Now you can see it a little bit. So you just take whatever color you want. Let's say let's pick up this lavender color, and let's just kind of where can we paint it? Let's paint over here on this part of the plate that's dry. So normally you would paint this, and it would be nice and like that, nice and purpley, and but when you mix it with stand oil or linseed oil, which we'll do now, we'll just add a little bit of it. Actually, let me help if I'll put it on the right side of the brush. You'll see that when I go to when I go to pull the stroke, how much thinner it is. Can you see how much thinner it is? So that allows you to paint over things like this. And you can still see it. Like this. So now you can see you can still see the design through the plate, right? So you you do the underpainting, you pencil the underpainting in, and then you um, do the underpainting under that to, um, and of course the more glaze you use, the, the lighter and thinner it will be. Now you can do this in multiple layers. For instance, you could you could you could glaze it in this really light form over the top of the underpainting, and then come back with that, come back over the un underpainting, and uh, add more color. So you can you can continue to work this over and over and over and over and over again. So. It allows you to really build a, a rich layering that just regular, you know, paint and you know, oil paints, wet on wet, just won't allow you to do. So, I'll show you some other ones. Hang on a second. So here's some glazing I did yesterday. So these were underpaintings until yesterday. And then we began to add, then I began to add the glazing to it. So we're adding colors, right? So we've kind of gone from, from this style of painting, from this, from this underpainting, to these color layers. But most of what you're seeing in this picture is the underpainting, right? And so then you have a very light layer underneath it. There's actually, across these, uh, how many paintings are there? There's five. Across these five paintings, there's actually only six colors ever used. So, you know, it's a matter of just, just mixing it that way. So anyway, does that, does that help? Does that, does that explain it a little better? Maybe, hopefully. Emily, excuse me for using you as an example. At least I wasn't using you as a bad example, right? That's, that, can't, that should count for something. So, Emily was kind enough to let me practice on her face as a drawing, not on her real face. I told her though after I painted her picture, I said, "Oh, I'll be able. I can put your makeup on." She's like, "No." <laughs> All right, fair enough. I, I get it. I understand. All right, so here's another here's another glaze that we did on with red and green. All right, so this too was an underpainting, and um, Marion Dutton's course they actually show you like two different this same painting done through glazing. Like all that shadowing and all this shadowing is all done in the underpainting and all this shadowing. And so, you know, it's a matter of just glazes. Uh, you know, light layers of, of thinned out paint that you can glaze over the top. So, mostly in the underpainting here, all I really did was I, I kind of put some of these, a couple of these sky kind of uh, cloud things in that I wanted to put the boat in and I figured out where I wanted the horizon to be. And then I painted the ocean with some shadows. 
but uh, the rest of it I just kind of threw it in. So, anyway. All right, man. Well, listen, I'm going to take about... <clears throat> I'm going to take about a 30 minute break, eat some lunch, and then I'm going to come back and I'm just going to paint a traditional painting. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be on black canvas or white canvas. I'll have to go see what I've got jessoed up, but I'll be back because I'm not, I'm not tuckered out today. So I feel like I could probably do another painting today. I, I set a goal for myself of doing 100 paintings this year, and if I don't count those over there, I've only done like 80, so i got to get 20 of them done before the end of the year, so I gotta get some work done. Gotta quit, gotta quit goofing off in the garden and get that work done. So I'll be back at 3 o'clock and uh, charge it up and ready to go. You guys bring your paint brushes. I'll explain everything and you can paint along with me if you want to. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Hey, hey, Anthony. Hey, boss. We'll be back in 30 minutes, man. No, you couldn't use vegetable oil. You could, but but it wouldn't be a very good. Uh... The problem is is it'll crack, and it is there's not much. I mean, you could probably use it. Well, you could probably use it to, to paint, actually paint it with, but I don't think your painting would last very long. It's just not it's just not a, a good oil for that. So we'll see you guys at three. Thanks for watching. Bye.